Caroline Zook. This is my husband, Jason Zook, and we run Wandering Aimfully, an unboring coaching program for intentional online business owners. We traveled full-time in 2022 in Europe, and we are finally getting you caught up on our epic travel year with our last two destinations. In this video, we are taking you to Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically a region called Puglia, which is a region that we had never been to in Italy. We've been to Italy one time before, never to Puglia. Yeah, and if you don't know where Puglia is, because we didn't know where it was either, picture the boot that is Italy. It's the heel slash Achilles tendon of Italy. So that's where we spent time. So now let's get into what we did, where we stayed, and what we ate in Puglia, Italy. What we did in Puglia. So the first thing we did in Puglia was we actually flew into Bari, which is kind of like a bigger city on the coast there. And we had no idea what to expect. We only were staying there for just a weekend before we were moving on. And we enjoyed it so much. Yeah, it was a very lively city. Yeah. It was on the water. So it kind of had a feel of some cities that we've been to before, even one that we lived close to, which was San Diego. And yeah, it was just really enjoyable. We had some good meals, mm -hmm. had some good walks, had some good sunsets from our balcony at the hotel. It was, it was my perfect version of like big city life, which mm -hmm. is, it feels like a big city, but it's not really a huge city and you're still by the water, so it's perfect. So after our weekend in Bari, we actually decided to drive over to Manduria and we stopped at like a little beach club along the way, which was an absolutely delightful experience. Yeah, it was a little bit out of the way actually. We could have gone a direct route mm -hmm. to our next stop, but we were like, why not drive along the Italian coast right. and check out a resort that we didn't know if we had to be members to, to show up and it was like partake a in? It felt like a members only yeah. beach club. And so Jason being Jason was just like, let's just walk in I and mean, see. Worst thing they're gonna say is, get out exactly. and they didn't so and me being me though do you remember there was a guy in the parking lot who was like the parking lot yeah. attendant and i was like be cool be cool pretend yeah, like remembers yeah, yeah. and jason was like i really don't think he's like gonna like arrest you but okay yeah there's really no big deal here uh we had a nice little lunch the older couple next to us cheers about 47 times that is not an exaggeration it was they amazing. were cheersing left and right and every time we would hear the little clink we'd be like okay all right well i guess right. we should cheers too yeah and then yeah we just spent some time at the little club and taking in the sea view enjoying the summer weather because technically the that's when we were there. Sorry, they were playing, this has been like, uploaded so late. Quintessential Italian summer music, and it was just creating such a vibe. We loved it. Very enjoyable. So once we finished that drive, we arrived at the Vanilla Resort, mm. which we were staying at for a specific reason, which was our friends Matt and Nat's wedding. They were getting married. Yeah, they got married. And listen, we did not have a wedding. We eloped. However, if we had had a wedding. I have to say this is how we would have done it because it was just A plus, A plus on the I way. don't know if we would have thought about the Italian marching band. I don't Amazing. know if we would have thought about driving in in a little red, like quintessential Italian car. I don't know Amazing. if we would have thought about you rapping mid vows okay, like Nat, Nat did. Nat rapped her vows and really showed Matt up if we're being honest. It was fantastic. And it was, it was perfect. It was just such a beautiful occasion. We were saying during and after and now while we were thinking about recording this, I think it's the most beautiful wedding we've ever been to. Absolutely beautiful. From the sunset to the location to just the, all the handcrafted touches the of the entire size, thing. The perfect size, like it was the right size, the amount of people. It just felt like the perfect mix of like intimate but also lively. It was wonderful. And we also dressed like adults for once in our lives. I put on a dress. It was not an athleisure attire wedding, unfortunately. <laughs> so we did have to get some clothes to we wear, did. but we made that happen. And. I mean, I think we looked pretty good, especially with the backdrop that we had. I put a little photo on screen so you got to see that, but it was fun for us to dress up. Yeah. And that's honestly pretty much what we did in Puglia. We know that there is a ton more that we would love to see. Puglia really surprised us. We, we loved the region, so I think we'll definitely be back in the future. Plenty more left to explore. And really all we did was just kind of relax by the pool and, you know, enjoy our post-wedding hangovers. Yeah. stayed in Puglia. The first of three places that we're going to share with you was the Dillman Luxury Hotel in Bari. Mm -hmm. I found this hotel on Google Maps, had never looked at the, any hotels in Bari before, so I had no idea what to expect. And we ended up finding basically our perfect little hotel. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't know it was like a boutique hotel when you found it. I did it. not know that. And so we went into it just kind of expecting like, oh, we'll just stay here for the weekend. Again, but it, it was, was very affordably priced. It was very affordably for the, priced. For the luxury. In our minds, it was just a stopover to get to the wedding. 
Yet, when we arrive, it's this adorable boutique hotel with, you know, I think seven or eight floors or something. I think it was eight rooms total. Eight rooms total. Yeah. And we checked in a little late, and so we just check in at this bar with this lovely Italian woman offering us Prosecco, not speaking a lick of English, and just like basically has an envelope that says Caroline and Jason. No, no. She has (laughs) two two envelopes. envelopes. Okay, okay, okay. Didn't say our names. She just pushed them toward us, and we said, oh, that's us. So we could have just checked in as the other people had we wanted to. Uh, So that was just a very cute moment. It was very like quaint, which we loved. Um, A bonus is that we did discover in our room, the room was very nice, had an exercise bike. I did see this when I was booking the room. I think we booked the wellness suite. There was another one that had a sauna in it as well. It wasn't available. It wasn't available. I I did use that bike the one day we were there. But yeah, it was just a great room. It had this big living room outside, Mm -hmm. so we took advantage of that a little bit. But one of our favorite things was actually in the morning when we had breakfast. Mm -hmm. We went down and the owner of the hotel met us for breakfast, took our order, and then ran next door to get you a gluten-free bread or croissant. I asked if they had any gluten-free options and was sort of like, it's okay if you don't. And she was like, oh. Because Italy, not very gluten-free. Right. And she was like, oh, I can find it for you. And in her, you know, Italian English. And um, went next door and literally like, you know, came back and sourced like several different gluten-free bread options, which was just perfect. And that's why you go to some of those smaller hotels for that experience. And we would say, if you're going to be in Bari, 100% recommend the Dillman. Get the Prosecco welcome. Uh, pick an envelope. You can kind of have fun what picking room whatever room you want and just enjoy your time. The next place that we stayed was actually for Matt and Nat's wedding, which was the Vanilla Resort and Wine Hotel. hotel. Wine Hotel. Something a bunch of words like in there. that. Yeah. This was not the hotel where they were actually, like the venue of the wedding, but it was sort of where a lot of the guests it's were like, staying. It's like, you know the kids' table at like a big family gathering? It was gathering. the kids' table. It was the kids hotel. Only yeah. this kids' table hotel is such a surprise because I'm going to be honest, when we're driving up, you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we, were, we kept looking at the map going, are we in the right place? We thought we were lost. Yeah. And then you stumble upon throughout, like just again, middle of nowhere, these sort of walls yeah. and a gate. And so we call the number and the gate opens and you are just greeted with a castle yeah. in the middle of nowhere among just some land in Italy. It, <laughs> and you're like, what? Where are we? It was absolutely one of those moments where like the gate opened and you're yeah. like, Oh, wow. And you drive up and it's very much like it felt like I was in a movie. Like yes. for a moment, yes. I was like, oh, wow, we are movie stars. It's giving we White Lotus. It's yeah. like, you know. It was, it was really fantastic. The whole grounds of the place, this, this hotel we would 1000% recommend to actually seek out and go to. Absolutely. It was It was very much worth it. The pool was an amazing experience as well. We spent a lot of time by the pool, yeah. relaxing. Now, I will also say what makes it a Zook special Mm. is if you've watched any previous videos on this channel, you know we love our food. Yes. And this hotel has a green Michelin star restaurant attached to it, which we'll get into in the food section. Yes. Um, But that's a huge bonus. We actually didn't even know that because this was just, again, the kids' hotel that we were just supposed to go to for the wedding. So we stayed there. Uh, It was just a wonderful experience all around. Everybody was so friendly. The lobby was so well Mm. decorated. I think this is one of my top hotels that we've ever stayed at. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I would definitely go back to this hotel. Highly recommend it. You can also stay at the top of the castle, which is where our friends Matt and Nat were staying before the wedding, before they moved to the adult table hotel where they were having the wedding. So definitely recommend staying at the Vanilla. And the last place that we stayed in Puglia was actually in an area called Matola. And we just rented this sort of family house Airbnb. And the big selling feature of this Airbnb was actually not the place that you stayed itself, but the incredible incredible backyard and outdoor area. We specifically chose it because of this pool. Yeah. Because Puglia. Oh wow. Because we knew that after the fun of the wedding, yes. we were going to need a little bit of R&R time and relaxation and we utilized that pool to its full potential. As two people who scoured through and I'm not exaggerating, over a thousand Airbnb listings. You think so? This was I can't the a thousand. Oh, for the year, the entire year. Might Absolutely. Be. Do you know how many pages it I went through be. on Airbnb to it find find things? This was one where Matola was not on our map of a place to stay. It was very much out of the way. But when I got to the listing and I saw the backyard, I was like, oh, this is like a, an amazing place we would never find there. in our own travels or in our own places. So when we got there, it truly blew us away. Walking into this backyard, there was like modern art. There were about a thousand places you could sit in the backyard. And we just really soaked in the Italian sun and that kind of like ended the summer on a nice vibe. Yeah, and it's a good thing that there was an amazing outdoor area because not a lick of Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, no, there was no Wi-Fi. This no. was almost like we were transported back into Scotland, yeah. not having any Wi-Fi. Which but is good. It's we good just sometimes. It was just fine. We figured it out and we just again enjoyed that pool every single day. And 
what we ate in Puglia. One of our favorite places of all the places we ate at in Puglia, and possibly one of our favorite places oh, of the entire five. Top year. Top five of 2022 is this restaurant in Bari called Nosamba. It has a longer name. We'll, yeah. get, we'll put There's it on screen. There's a lot screen. of yeah. modifiers, but we're calling it Nosamba. And this restaurant is unlike any restaurant I have ever been to in my entire life. It is, according to its website, a fusion of like Mediterranean cuisine, Peruvian cuisine, um, Brazilian, Brazilian Japanese, cuisine, Japanese cuisine, like yeah. various different fusions. Some Italian as well in there. It's basically just like a bunch of chefs came together from all around the world and they were like, hey, do you like making your stuff? I'm like, yeah, I like making my stuff. Well, let's just make all of this but stuff, but in tiny little bites. Yes, and normally sometimes like, all of those unique flavors can get lost in kind of when you're trying to do too many things. But this restaurant is so quirky, so thoughtfully considered. It has a whole host of like very unique sushi rolls, other little dishes and bites. I mean, and we love like kind of that tapas style of just you order a bunch of things and you get to taste a lot of things. And that was my favorite thing about this restaurant is yeah ordering so many things from the menu. Yeah, it was one of those where we looked at the menu and we're like, how many things do we order? And we asked the server and he was like, oh, you just order some. And it's a t it was an Italian server, so like you kind of get that air of like, just do whatever you're gonna do. <laughs> yeah. And so we just like kind of kept ordering and kept ordering. And then you get like little bites here and there. We had some cocktails that were absolutely mm, delicious cocktails. as well. Just overall, this restaurant, if you're just gonna say, Hey Zooks, what's just like the restaurant you want to go to on a Friday night? This is the place, no Samba. Keep in mind, I know it's a little strange to go all the way to Bari, Puglia, Italy, and not you're gonna have so many pasta restaurants, so many yes. traditional Italian restaurants. Definitely do that. Definitely and enjoy that. And we did that. have those and for we other did. meals. Yeah. Absolutely. But this was a standout to me because of how original it was, and it was just it was so memorable. All right, we have two meals we want to share with you at the Vanilla. Right. Uh, one of which was just a poolside, very simple thing, and I'm going to let Caroline take it. Okay, so they, like many, you know, hotels have a sort of like pool bar restaurant that you can eat lunch at while you sit by the pool. You all been to a pool at a hotel. You've been you to know a pool. What's up. And I saw this sandwich, and it was. It's hard to it's, even call it a sandwich. It's something I'll never forget in my yeah. entire life. It is the thickest focaccia, delicious bread I've ever seen in my life. Actually, just one little pad of focaccia, yeah. not little, large with like prosciutto and then stracciatella cheese. And here was my pro move. The focaccia was so thick that I could slice it in half <laughs> and take the bottom piece and make it a top piece and make it like a full sandwich. And it was so good that I had it. It was. I had it two days in a row. The simplest sandwich I've ever seen, but it was absolutely unbelievably delicious. That just made me think we need to get the supplies from the store and you should make some focaccia and then I can have that. I'm hearing a lot of I shoulds. Also, one of us is gluten free, just by kind of like choice, not necessarily. It's not an tolerance. allergy. And so Jason was like, oh, gluten free is what okay, we're doing. And yeah. I was like, no, the reason- But also, the, I couldn't fault you. The reason I'm gluten free for the entire year is so I can save up enough gluten to eat this sandwich. Yeah. Okay, once we left the pool and we stopped eating focaccia for days, yes. we went to the restaurant at the Vanilla, which I think is just the restaurant at the Vanilla. This, we found out, was a green Michelin star restaurant, which means that the majority of their ingredients have to come from zero kilometers away. That's how you earn a green Michelin star, which means that they are all on property. This was absolutely incredible. We Out went with the world. vegetarian tasting menu. We thought you don't go to a green Michelin star restaurant and not order the vegetarian menu. So it was incredible. Every dish was so well considered. I didn't know vegetables could taste like this. Yeah. Some of the standouts for me were sort of the um, the fried shallot. They did, yeah. Well, and dish. before that we had like 19 canapes, which oh. if you watched any of our other videos, you know that we ran I into some other canapes, which are just like these little bites. Like there was a little taco that had like a puree in oh, it. The taco. Oh, I know. It's ridiculous. And then the star of the show yeah. was the rolled up zucchini, zucchini, which if you've seen the movie Ratatouille or Rakakuni, if you've seen everything ever all at once, it is that moment where you like take a bite and it just like transports you somewhere yes, else. Yes. I it was, was just picturing cutting through the layers of the ratatouille and that's what it felt like to me. And just the flavors were so delicious. And then also the final standout for me was the lemon dessert where mm. they they did a mold of a lemon, so it, the dessert itself looks like lemon, but it's like a custard. Oh it's my gosh. lemon three ways. So there was so like good. a lemon kind of like a sugary bark, mm. then the lemon with mm. like the mold, and then a curd on the inside. Okay, my mouth is watering. And that doesn't include the other like canapé desserts that we had as well. This restaurant was absolutely fantastic. We, again, didn't even know that it existed when we showed up to the hotel. Further so, reason to seek out this hotel and go stay there. Such a surprise, so many delights, just a wonderful atmosphere mm -hmm. as well. One of our favorite restaurants of the year. Absolutely. Right there.
was our time in Puglia, Italy. I have to say, this was such a beautiful part of Italy that completely blew us away. We did not expect it. I want to go back. Yes, for sure. Um, and be able to see more things, but it, it definitely some something to put on your bucket list. Yeah, and I think the beauty of it, especially during this time of year, so just to put this in context, we were there in September. Nothing felt super busy. The airport didn't feel super busy. It didn't Bari. feel oppressively hot. Yeah, it was just like really the perfect time. The pool was still very warm to swim in, both at the hotel and at the Airbnb. So yeah, just absolutely loved the entire region of Puglia, and we only saw a little bit of it, but we would love to go back and spend more time there. The one thing we didn't love, though, the Italian driving, especially in this region, Wow, they just kind wow. of like go at their own pace. We dr have driven in several, several, several countries this year, and by far, driving in Italy was my most like anxiety-inducing experience. And yeah. it's just because they're, like I wouldn't say they're bad drivers, they know what they're doing, it's just Very they aggressive. take liberties. Yeah, at a roundabout, you'll learn in Europe if you, when, you try, when you drive around, there's just times when you wait. Italians do not wait. It's just you go. There's you no go. stopping. You just pull up and get into a roundabout. Also, one of our absolute favorites and not favorites was you're on a two lane road, traffic going this way, traffic going this way. They will pass in the middle while cars are passing each other. So it becomes like a three lane road where there's only two lanes. And honestly, thank goodness that we visited Italy, like our second to last <laughs> yeah. country, because Ooh. I have driving anxiety and thank goodness it has definitely dissipated as the year went on and we drove in more places. But if we had started with Italy, I think I would have been like, we're not driving we in Italy this in the what we did section just to say that we survived driving in Italy because yeah. we did we no did. accidents we didn't do any middle lane passing them now on to our final segment where we do a completely arbitrary rating scale yes. of the country we haven't done this in a while so a while. Caroline's gonna try and do it I've got notes here to keep us on I'm track. gonna try to remember all of our emoji ratings from every other video we've done yes. so far so here we go you got it in Lisbon, we had the peacock. Yes. In Kinsale, Ireland, we had the seal. Yes. In Bally Bunyan, Ireland, we had the seashell. Yes. In Split, Croatia, we had the cat. Yes. In Var, Croatia, we had the sailboat. Mm-hmm. In France, we had the croissant. Mm-hmm, nice. In Greece, first in, at Royal Senses, we had the cocktail. Great. Second at Aja Pelagia, Crete, we had the ooh, ooh, what was it? It's a little palm tree on the, the island. The palm tree on the island, because yeah, yeah, yeah. beach vibes. Then the Netherlands, we had Swan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then after that, we went to Scotland. Scotland, where, where we, we had, had the, the cow. The hairy cow. It's the not the hairy actually cow. The, you know, well, to... you know, what we're saying is a hairy cow. After Scotland, now to Italy? Yep, Puglia. Yeah. To Puglia specifically, we are going to give it a no, pasta. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought you were going to go ahead and rate no, it. No, I was no, like, no. well, tell them what it we is. We are going to use a pasta. It's pasta. It's in pasta. Puglia. I mean, come on. I know it's, it's such like a cliche thing to do, but like we, we had to. pasta a bunch of times and it was delicious. Um, so How for, many pastas are you giving Puglia? For Puglia, I am going to give it nine pastas. I think it's a really fair amount. Honestly, I think the, the driving is the only reason why it doesn't get a, it a, ten. a 10th pasta. Uh, I will agree. I think nine pastas is a fair amount. Specifically if you don't, Puglia in September. If you don't have to drive, it's probably a 10 pasta probably stay 10 pasta. all day. Like if you just went to the Vanilla Resort mm. and you ate that sandwich, you hung out by the pool, you went in the castle, you just enjoyed your time there, and then you ate at the restaurant with the Green Michelin Star, that's 10 pastas yeah. all day. So yeah, that is our rating of Puglia. And again, that's just a very silly thing that we do. But now we also have a sneak peek of our final destination from our 2022 travels. So you can take a look at that. You can guess in the comments if you wanna guess where we stayed in our final place. And it's kind of amazing that we are wrapping up our epic year of travel. I know Hard we're doing believe. it here in 2023, but we hope you've enjoyed coming along on the journey with us in all of these videos. Thanks for watching.